Okay, here we go. Okay. Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome, Miss Carmen. Good to see you. Welcome. Today we have a pretty interesting topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about Kingdom Mindset. Contending for your destiny. Yeah. I hope everybody had a wonderful day on today. We're going to wait just a couple of minutes before we get started. I know for me, my day has been pretty busy. Pretty, pretty busy. But um, I'm thankful for this assignment. So we're going to push this on out. Uh, today and uh, we're praying that it be a blessing to those that come in and join us or even would catch the playback. Um, I have not introduced myself. My name is Dion Walk It Out uh, Crump and I am the soul therapist and myself and uh, Miss Shamira Yancey of It Shall Speak Ministries we are uh, tag teaming on this project in sharing kingdom mindset and we're highlighting uh, the courtrooms of heaven really understanding what that is and uh, seeing it as a prayer strategy um, oftentimes we pray and uh, we don't get the answer that we think we're going to get when it's not answered or um, you know, we pray and we pray and we feel like, you know, God has heard our prayer and that, you know, he's going to answer that prayer, uh, but it doesn't work out the way we had planned. And so we've talked about um, really different scenarios, but mainly we see this as a strategy because when you're praying and you're not getting the answer and you just don't know why, then it may be that you need to go to the courts of heaven. And uh, and so this whole series that we'll be doing, uh, that's what we'll be talking about. And uh, it's running from January through, uh, we're going to end in February the 24th. And so, um, yeah, this is a pretty good, pretty good little strategy, pretty good little teaching that we have. And so just to give you a little review of what we have uh, covered already, uh, we started out looking at the persistent widow. Uh, you can find that uh, scenario or that, that uh, story in Luke 18. And the persistent widow uh, was a woman who had been wronged. And she went to the judge to get a verdict for her favor. She wanted to get, uh, she wanted an event, she wanted to get her revenge, really. Uh, and she wanted the judge to grant her the right to get what was rightfully hers. And um, what we highlighted in that is that this woman, she did not go straight toward the enemy, the one that, you know, wronged her, but she went to the judge. She went to the one that could make a difference, you know, the one who could make the decision. And so uh, we, we liked her because she was very persistent. And we highlighted in one of the first lessons was that our God, he's not an unjust judge. Now, she went to an unjust judge, but we're going to... A just judge. I'm busy right now, son. Oh. Uh, you can take what you need to take my car. No. Okay. I was just gonna ask you, where you working tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Can you close my door, please? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, the other thing is, we talked about, again, we talked about that persistent widow and how she went to an unjust judge, but we are going to a just judge. And our just judge, you know, he is not only our judge, but he's not only a just judge, but he's our father. And so, of course, he wants to see us succeed. And he is just waiting for us to do the right thing so that he can give us what we've asked for. But oftentimes, we don't know. You know, we don't know what's missing. We don't know what we did wrong. We don't know why our prayers are not being answered. And so we talked about that a lot on um, the first time we came up last Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and then 
on the next Tuesday, the Tuesday after that, which was last uh, Tuesday, we talked about entering the courts of heaven. And in that lesson, that week, we talked about um, that heaven is a literal place. It's a very literal place, and oftentimes we don't think about it that way. We just think about heaven as a place that we go when we die. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are there with him in our spirit man. So last week we talked a lot about that spirit man and how that spirit man is living in us, and he's living in you know, uh, right next to Jesus in heaven. And that is our connection. And so we talked a lot about that. About how you know what happens at salvation. And and how we uh, you know have that connection through prayer. And that as we, as we grow in God. That we're learning that new part of us. Because we really literally became a new person. Because uh, Holy Spirit came to live uh, on the inside of us. And so... Um, yeah, and we talked about um, what it's like to really go into uh, the courts of heaven and that uh, when you pray that you want to, um, you really want to envision yourself in heaven and you trust and believe that God will show that to you and he will in your own way, in his own way because he knows us and he knows uh, what grabs our attention and what would make us uh, pay attention and so uh, I encourage you that if you want to um, experience heaven in this way, that when you pray, that you would really uh, ask God to show you um, heaven. He'd give you an image of your of one of the heavenly courts. Now, what we learned through this study is that you know there are several courts, and it's set up very much like um, our our you know court system here meaning that you know there's legality there's a judge there are, there's a defense there's a prosecutor you know and and through all of that um that's how um it's set up even in heaven and as we go through this study we'll find out not only is there a, a um I'm sorry a prosecutor and a defense but there's also other witnesses that are there and so um, all of this is about our really learning this and not only learning this, but experiencing it. I've come to a point where um, I don't want to just read the Bible like it's a story. You know, it's not a story. It is an experience that God wants us to experience him. Uh, that's the only way we're going to be able to move as Jesus moved. And he said that we would. He said, the greater, he said that we would do greater things than that. And so... Um, that's what we're seeking to. We want to make this very real for you, um, as it has been real for me, um, because I just, like I say, I believe in action now. No longer are we just trying to fill our heads with a bunch of knowledge, but we want to really experience what God says in His Word. Okay, and then uh, last week, uh, today is Tuesday. Last Thursday, uh, Shamira. She came up with uh, Jesus is our mediator. Jesus is our mediator. And he, um, basically she talked about how Jesus is the one that brings us together with, with God. You know, and he's the mediator and why he's the best person to be that. Because, you know, he's God and he understands his holiness as well as he was human. So he understands how frail we are, excuse me, as human beings. And so, um. Jesus is the one that could sympathize with us. So he, he is a very good person to be, you know, our mediator. Okay. And so that's pretty much a review of me. Uh, I'm going to be flipping through the book. Mindset, contending for your destiny. Contending for your destiny. And again, this is the book that we're using. Uh, Robert Henderson, um, Operating in the Courts of Heaven. And, you know, I use not just this book, I use other books too, but this one is the foundation of what we've been using. And, um, I think this book does a really good job of highlighting, um, that not only that God is a holy God, but that, uh, but that he is a judge, meaning that there are, uh, legal, um, 
statutes in place that could prevent our getting our prayers answered. And, you know, I talked about a little bit last time how sometimes we think that um, God don't hear our prayer or that, you know, something happened and it was just God's will. You know, it must have just been God's will because, you know, that's what happened. Well, no, it wasn't God's will, you know, but there are legal um, rules already established that God could not break because why? Because we, we as human beings did not do our part. You know, God said that he, in fact, let me go and read the scripture in Matthew 16, 18 through 19. Um, Jesus said to Peter, he said, and I, and I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, you will bound in heaven, will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so what's what's really um what what Jesus was trying to uh, help us understand there is that we as human beings, we are the judicial the legislative and the we are the government, the governmental body. We are the governmental people of the kingdom of heaven. And if we don't uh, invoke our authority, he's not going to move. He needs us to uh, do our part so that he can move, so that he can be that just judge and so that he can bless us. But guess what? When we, um, when we pray, we have to know that we have an accuser. And in the court, there is an accuser. In fact, in one of the books um, I read, and, and I'm noticing that as you, and if you, this is an interest of yours and you do your own study, you'll find that uh, as you read different books, you know, God reveals these courts of heaven to people in different ways. So I read one book, uh, and that one, I believe that was by the praying medic, and he talked about um, uh, the, the, the accuser, not the court being called... Um, the, the court of accusations, you know, and, and so when you go to that court, you find out what the accusation is against you. Now, um, in this book, he taught, he calls the court, um, he uses the, 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 uh, the throne of grace because the Bible talks about our being able to uh, go before the throne of grace and where we can find mercy and help in our time of need. Well, uh, uh, the praying medic describes the court, the first court, as the uh, court of accusations, which really, you know, both of them make sense because if you go to, um, we cannot get in unless we have repented, you know, and so we can't repent unless we know what the accusation is against us. You know, we talked about how, you know, there is no lying in heaven that you, you know, you can't lie in heaven. So God already knows the truth. The enemy can't bring any lies to, to God. You know, the accuser cannot accuse us against any, uh, cannot accuse us of doing anything that we did not actually do or someone in our family connected to us do or something that we didn't do that we were supposed to do. You know, the accusation is real, basically. And so when you go to court, you find out what it is that the enemy or the accuser has against you. And so, um, like I say, I'm, I'm finding out, and even as I have uh, sought and was successful in uh, praying in this manner where, you know, I was allowed to go into the courts of heaven where I could actually see, you know, uh, what was going on there, what it looked like, you know. Uh, I could see how God does reveal it to uh, individuals in their, own, in, an, in their own unique way, so... Um, in this court, again, we do have an accuser. We have an accuser, and we know that uh, Jesus even talked about how uh, when he told when he told Peter that 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 the enemy had sought to uh, sift him like wheat, right? And so even that he was not able uh, to do that without um, 
without going before the Lord first. But, pe but Jesus said that he had prayed for him that his faith wouldn't fail. And so and now all of this is, is something that we want to keep in mind that when we go before God in the courts of heaven that we have an accuser and that we need to be positioned to repent from um, what whatever uh, that accusation is. And sometimes, you know, you may not even have to go into the courts of heaven to find out what you did wrong. So that's why we always start out prayer in um, in in worship and in in honoring God and and um, yeah, we always start out that way. And um, with that, I did not pray. So let me pray now. Father, I bless you for tonight. I bless you for this word, God. I pray, Lord, that as we get into the meat of uh, your message on tonight, Father, I pray that you be um, in the midst, Lord, that you would even take control, Father, that it won't be me, but that it would be you, Father, that would um, speak to your people. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So, uh, like I said, um, we're going into this court. Uh, Jesus is our mediator. And Jesus has a very good understanding of both sides. And um, you know, when we go before the throne, we, we have to be clean. And so that's why uh, it's imperative. And we've talked about this too, how, how imperative, imperative it is that we repent and that we ask God to forgive us of our sins and those that we don't know that we did that that uh, we would find out what that accusation is against us and we would immediately uh, repeat because get, repent because we have to be um, holy before God. God is a holy God and um, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior we know that um, Jesus is in us. And uh, when we go uh, before the courts um, in, in, in the Spirit, by the Spirit, that we go as uh, a child of God. We go with Christ's name. We go in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, we could go in the name of Christ because we are Christ. Christ is in us and, uh, and he dwells in us and he speaks for us. So we go uh, after we have repented and we know that Jesus is our, um, our, our, he speaks, um, let me put it this way, that God sees Jesus, that he wouldn't see us, that he sees uh, Jesus. So we stand, you know, in, in, in holiness. Okay. And one thing too, I brought out last week was, uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before I brought out, uh, Zechariah three verse one through seven. And this was a, a instance where, um, Joshua the priest was being accused, you know, and 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 uh the the um prophet talked about this vision that he had uh where Joshua stood uh, before uh the throne before the angel of the Lord, I should say, and uh in 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 standing there, he was dirty and he was filthy. And uh the reason why is because we stand before a holy God. And he couldn't stand there because he was filthy. And why are we filthy? It represented the, the sin, you know, the sin that, that covered him. Not only the sin that covered him, but the, but he stood for an entire nation because God had, uh, he had a real work for him. And so that gets to our uh, topic today because when we go into, when we're going there and we're trying to get our prayers answered, we really are contending for our destiny. This uh, prophet, um, this prophet, uh, jo jo Joshua, the high priest, when he uh, was seen there, he, he, he was covered, like I said, with filthy garments. And those filthy garments represented not only his sin. We know that the priest would have to, uh, he would have to uh, repent and, and give a sacrifice for his own sin, as well as that for the people. And so this priest, you know, he had on um, filthy, filthy, filthy rags, but he did show up uh, to court and... You know, the angel of the Lord uh, told him, he said, um, Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among these who stand there. 
So, you know, this, this guy's, um, his call was so huge, you know, that God was going to give him a, 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 a charge in his courts, that, that he would have his own court uh, to rule. Now, I've read also that, um, you know, when, when we reach a certain uh, level in God, that, that, that there is a throne that's waiting for you to rule on when you, you know, when you are ready, you know, once you go, you know, to heaven after you pass, uh, that you will be seated uh, and you will be ruling over your own throne. And so um, it's just so interesting when you read about heaven and you read about, um, you know, uh, all the many different, you know, intricacies. Uh, it's a whole world. You know, and, and we have access to that world through our spirit. But again, the Satan came to accuse Joshua of uh, his uncleanliness. But God, because he showed up, you know, he he cleansed him and he just he 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 uh, he made him clean. And he told the angels to put clean linen on him and to put a, 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 a turban on his head, a white turban on his head. And so that's what happens when we when we repent. And so, you know, the prayer is to Lord, just clean me up, clean me up, Lord, clean me up, you know, uh, yeah, so that God so that we can have that pure heart and God can really um, reveal to us all that we need to be uh, revealed to us. Amen. And so, uh, let me see, what else did I want to cover? Um, okay, yeah, let me hit, hit that one more time. When he cleansed him, uh, say if we would stay clean and walk righteously, he would grant, he would be granted the charge of the courts of the Lord and he would judge the house of the Lord. Meaning that he would be given authority in the courts of heaven to be able to render judgments that set things in order. And that's just amazing, you know, that God would want to do that for us. Amen. And I always love uh, Psalm 139, 23 uh, through 24, because that's when we talk about, you know, that we want to be cleansed and that we, we ask God to, to, to clean me and, and give me a pure heart. Okay, um, let's see. Um, okay, yeah, let me go here too. And one thing too we want to remember too is say remember that Satan can only devour when he has a legal reason to devour us. And uh, this is one thing we talked about a lot last week also is that... Um, is that uh, Satan, you know, he always has a real reason for accusing us. And sometimes we have no way of knowing. I know the first time I read this, I was like, you know, we would never know this. So how would we know what our great, 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 you know, grandmother did or, or grandfather did, you know. And, and God says that, you know, that's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. You know, he gave us the Holy Spirit, and, and we also have, you know, when, when we get, have real prayer partners that, that pray with us, you know, just as God, and, and when, that's when prophecy comes in also, just like God gives uh, you, um, uh, reveals things to you, and sometimes he may reveal things to you about other people, he does that also for your prayer partners, you know, that, that God will reveal certain things to them also so it's, it is a it is a kingdom work it's it's a body of christ work in prayer and god will do that um for you amen okay let me see and let's see yeah oh yeah i like this here part two um so we've talked about how sin gives satan um, really legal right to either hinder our prayer or block it totally, okay? And um, there is a way that we can close the doors that was open through sin. 
And again, that goes back to when I was talking about the bloodline sins. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just going to read this the way he have it here. It says, another necessary thing that must be done to secure our future is to realize that Satan will exploit anything possible. Most of us have enough personal issues that supply the devil with accusations to last a lifetime. As a big issue, uh, a big issue of this is uh, that we must realize that anything in our bloodline can be legal that Satan can use to accuse us. Okay, and so again, but we can we can block that. And why do I know that? Because right here. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25 through 28, um, he says that I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. Okay? And so, what really stuck me here is, uh, Jesus is saying, uh, 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 the Word of God is saying here, that he blots out our sins. That's why, so, you know, this is not a message for somebody that don't know Christ. Okay, it, it, this is a, a message for somebody who, who knows Christ, who knows that he's living in you, and knows that what he did for your sins. So Christ is saying he blots out your sins, he blots out your transgressions, and he will remember your sins no more. He won't remember it anymore. So how, does that, so how do we mess up there? We mess up there because, you know, God didn't forgive us, but you ain't forgave yourself. So God forgives you, but you haven't forgotten yourself. God say, forgive yourself. For God's sake, forgive yourself. Because he can't move unless you are doing what, you know, you're moving in what God is. To. If he say, I forgave you, then how dare you not forgive yourself. Okay? So for God's sake, you might need to write that down. For God's sake, forgive yourself. Because he needs our cooperation. And if you haven't forgiven yourself, then, then, you know, Satan can use that against you. You know, well, she hasn't even forgave herself. You know, she hasn't even forgiven herself. So, really what I wanted to cover today was, was just really to just hit on those few points today. Wanted to talk about, you know, how important it is, you know, that, that you understand that uh, when you go into heaven, that when you go, that... In prayer, and you're going into the courts of heaven, that uh, you have a contender, I mean, you have an adversary there, and that he is seeking to use everything he can against you. And if he is successful, then you will not be able to uh, fulfill your destiny. You know, we are contending for our destiny. Everything that God has planned for us, everything that he has planned for us, is in our destiny. So you, when you're contending, that's what you're contending for. So you want to be able to remove anything that the enemy might have against you. Amen? Okay. So uh, I believe that's going to close me out for tonight. And um, hey there, Virtue Speaks. Now, Virtue Speaks is uh, sharing uh, this teaching with me, and she'll be up on this Thursday. So uh, I want to encourage you guys to follow her. And um, and join in with this study. Uh, again, my name is Dion Walk It Out. And I am the soul therapist. And uh, we are excited about doing this teaching. And I hope that you guys will stick with us throughout the lesson. So you guys be blessed. And I'll catch you on the next time. Alright. Bye bye.